In today's video, I'm gonna go over six exercises you can perform within 30 minutes for a full body workout. So for a full body workout, we wanna work on six main movement patterns. That's gonna be a push, a pull, a squat, a hinge, a lunge, and a carry. So within these six exercises, there are many different types of exercises you can perform. So we're gonna go over the most common ones that I would recommend to patients to get a full body workout. So for a push, for example, we can do a bench press, we could do an overhead press. Um, there's lots of different press motions we can do, but typically I'll recommend either a push up, a bench press, or an overhead press. For a pull, what I would recommend is either a dumbbell row, or I would recommend a pull up, or any version, or a lat pull down, any version where you're gonna be pulling either from um, above your head or horizontally. For a squat, what I would typically recommend is start off doing like an air squat, work up to doing a goblet squat, and then if you wanna do a barbell back squat, that would be fine as well. For a hinge motion, what I typically would recommend to patients is either gonna be a kettlebell swing or a deadlift. Those are gonna be the most beneficial to develop the hinge pattern for a full body exercise. Now for a lunge pattern, what I would recommend is just a split squat um, where you're lunging forward. That would be a good one or a reverse lunge um, using like a veil slide. Those are gonna be a great lunge exercises you can perform. The final movement pattern that you wanna do for a full body workout is gonna be a carry. So a carry is just gonna be simply when you're carrying either dumbbells or a kettlebell. And what this does, it helps strengthen your core and it helps to improve your posture. So we'll show you how you would perform a carry exercise that can help strengthen your core and help you perform a full body workout. Now, if you perform this full body workout three times a week, it's gonna cover all your major muscle groups and movement patterns. I highly recommend you perform these. It should take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes at the max. But once you get a routine down, it's a great overall body workout. And you can perform these if you're traveling or at the gym. These work in many different situations or even at home. You don't need a lot of equipment. So we'll go over some of the equipment I would recommend and um, how you can perform these. So the first movement pattern we're gonna do for a full body workout is gonna be a push. Some examples of a push is you're gonna be a bench press, a overhead press, or even a push up. So what we'll do is we'll demonstrate an overhead press and then we'll also demonstrate a push up and how you'd perform those. So for an overhead press, what you'll either need is gonna be a band or a um, dumbbell to press overhead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a band. What I'll do is I'll also link the product in the description below if you wanna purchase these bands or any of the other products. These are very inexpensive and easy way to get a full body workout. So what we'll do is we'll put the bands around our feet and we'll step on the band and then what we're gonna do about shoulder width apart, Renee's gonna bring it up to her chest and then she's simply just gonna press overhead. And what you wanna do is you wanna do about 10 repetitions for three sets. You can work up to five sets as well, but start off just doing three sets of 10 repetitions. Now what you'll notice is as she's pressing this, she's also maintaining good posture and form. So just going straight overhead and back down. She's not rushing through this and when she's coming down, she's nice and slowly gonna lower the band or the weight in this case. And that's a great exercise for a press. And like I said, we can also do a bench press if you have access to that or even just a simple push up. The next movement pattern we want for a full body workout is gonna be a row motion. Now row, typically I would recommend like a dumbbell row. You can also do a cable machine row where you're bringing it in like that. Um, but this is a simple exercise that will help to strengthen the muscles in your back and your rotator cuff. And what you can do with a band is you can wrap it around the door handle and that'll help secure it. Or if you have somebody that hold the band, you can also do that. Now Renee, what I want you to do is to wrap your hand and wrist around that band and I'll hold on to it as if I'm the door. And what I want Renee to do is to get into an athletic posture, so one leg back, and all she's gonna do is she's going to start off and row it back towards her. Good, and back, and nice and slow, and go forward and back. And again, what we wanna do is 10 repetitions for three sets. And as you get stronger, you can go up in weight and you can go up in um, band strength as well. But that's a great exercise to help strengthen the muscles in your back, which will help improve your posture. So the next movement pattern we wanna do for a full body workout is gonna be a squat. So that can look like an air squat, that could be a box squat, uh, it could also be what we call a goblet squat. And also obviously you can do a barbell back squat. What I would start off is just an air squat, perfect that and then you can go up in terms of um, difficulty and then improve your strength. So what I'm gonna have Renee do is do it, demonstrate an air squat and then we'll also demonstrate a goblet squat. 
Now for an air squat, what I want you to do is I want you to get feet shoulder width apart and arms out straight in front of you. And then what I want you to do as far as you feel comfortable, squat down um, and, and go ahead and squat down. Perfect. There you go. And you want to squat down to a depth you feel comfortable. And you, what you want to do is you want to maintain a good posture while you're doing this. You want to make sure that your arms are out in front. You're not um, tilting too far forward or too far back and your chest is up. And you want to do 10 repetitions of three sets. Now let's demonstrate it um, facing away. And you can demonstrate what a good air squat looks like. Again, arms out in front and she's going to hinge and squat down deep far as she feels comfortable. If you can only go to parallel, that's fine. If you can go deeper, or if you need to even just do a half squat, that's okay. But again, we want to do 10 repetitions for three sets. Now, if you have access to either a kettlebell or a dumbbell, you can perform what we call a goblet squat. So a goblet squat is simply, you're going to get into that same shoulder width pattern. You're going to hold the dumbbell or the kettlebell close to your chest. And all you're going to do at that point is you're going to squat down. So let's have you demonstrate what that would look like. So hold that up against your chest. And what I want you to do is squat down as far as you feel comfortable and again maintain good posture as you're squatting you want to again try to maintain that chest nice and upright and go down and up we're going to do 10 repetitions for three sets and again we want to keep that weight close to our body which is going to help to develop that strength in that squat pattern so again for the goblet squat we want to perform 10 repetitions for three sets the next movement pattern we want to strengthen is going to be a hinge pattern. Now for a hinge pattern, we can either do a deadlift or we can do a kettlebell swing. What we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate what it will look like to do a deadlift pattern using a band. But again, you can also use a deadlift pattern using either a barbell or what we call a hex bar. Those are great ways to help um, develop that hinge pattern. Another great way to do that is to do what we call a kettlebell swing. That helps to strengthen that hinge pattern and to do that as well. Now when we're doing a hinge pattern the big key is we want to make sure we're hinging right we're not rounding our back while we're doing either a deadlift or a kettlebell swing we want to imagine we're deriving our butt back and we're maintaining a straight posture with our spine so what it's going to look like is we're going to hinge forward and then come back up again hinge at the waist and come back up and what that's going to do that hinge pattern is going to help to strengthen the muscles in the posterior chain but also help to develop core strength as well so let's demonstrate what it's going to look like using a banded uh, deadlift so in this situation what i'm going to have renee do is she's going to double up the band so instead of a single band we're going to double it up and she's going to step on the band and i want her to wrap her wrist around the band and then from that point what she's going to do is she's going to stand up nice and tall using the hinge pattern and that's going to be how you would deadlift with a band and we're going to have her step on the band and i want her to be about shoulder width apart and she's going to wrap her arms around the band and using that good hinge pattern she's going to come up to an upright position good and then back down and back up and she's using a good hip hinge which is not going to stress her low back but also help to strengthen that posterior chain and again with this if you only feel comfortable going halfway that's fine ideally want to go further and hinge deeper into it but just to start off go as far as you feel comfortable again we don't want to round our back because that potentially could irritate our back but if you do this hip hinge pattern correctly it's a great full body exercise now what the deadlift is going to look like from the side position again she's got a nice neutral flat back and she's just going to come up to an upright position Again, you can see, and she's gonna hinge down. She's maintaining a nice straight back. She's not rounding. So we know it's a safe position for her back and she's going down as far as she feels comfortable. Now, the big thing though you can see is that she's coming up. She's coming all the way up to the top position and then slowly lowering it back down. And that's a great example of a hip hinge doing a deadlift using a band. The next movement pattern we want to perform for a full body workout is going to be a lunge. Now a lunge pattern is simply going to be where we're just in a split stance. We're going to lunge down and we can either do this statically. We can either do a reverse lunge or a walking lunge. And what we'll do is we'll demonstrate all three positions there. And what you can do is just to start off, do it without weight. And then you can add like five pound dumbbells. You can work our way up. We can also use kettlebells as a strengthening exercise. But this is great because it is a split stance, which helps to strengthen your glute muscles and to help um, with like runners. This is a great exercise. It also works to improve your balance as well. So let's just demonstrate what a um, lunge pattern is going to look like. To perform a static lunge, what it's going to look like is we're going to split our stance here. And what she's going to do is she's, as far as she feels comfortable, she's going to lunge down and drive her knee down to the ground. Good. And 
what she's gonna do, she's gonna lunge down, try to touch her knee down towards the ground. And again, you don't have to go all the way to the ground, go down as far as you feel comfortable. If this causes knee pain or stresses your knee too much, either don't go down as far or just skip this exercise. But eventually we do wanna work to developing this pattern because it can help strengthen your muscles in your quad and take pressure off of your knee. And again, just start off without weight to start and then work up to like a five pound dumbbell or kettlebell as well. Now to perform a reverse lunge, all she's gonna do, she's gonna start off with both feet um, together and then she's going to take a step back, say with her left leg in this situation and she's gonna lunge down, good and come back forward again and do another reverse lunge. A lot of times with people with knee pain, this is a little bit of a safer way to perform a lunge and still get the benefit of a full lunge. And again, you can work through this, you can add weight to this and make it more and more difficult, but this is a great exercise. And what you wanna do is you wanna perform 10 repetitions on one leg and 10 repetitions on the other leg. And then you do a total of three sets of both sides. Now to perform a walking lunge, all we're gonna do is the same pattern except for we're gonna be moving forward. So what she's gonna do, she's gonna take a step forward and then lunge down, come back up, and now she's gonna do another lunge and back down. And she's just gonna go back and forth, start off maybe doing 10 to 15 feet, and then ultimately you wanna go back and forth about 30 feet up to 50 feet and go down as far as you feel comfortable. If you are doing this at home, obviously you're gonna have a limitation in space, but if you have a living room, this is also a great one to do it. And again, you can work up to doing it with weight or using a kettlebell as well. Now the walking lunge is a great exercise because not only do you get the lunge pattern, but you're also moving while you're lunging, which helps to strengthen your core and your hips even more. The final movement pattern you wanna train is called the carry movement. So a carry is simply, we're gonna be carrying two weights in our hands, or either a dumbbell or a kettlebell, and we're gonna hold those weights by our side and we're gonna have good posture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk forward and back while maintaining that good posture and carrying that weight. Now what that's gonna do, it's going to activate your core muscles. It's gonna also work on the spinal stabilizers and help to incorporate that movement between your upper and lower body as we're going through the movement pattern. It will also help to improve your grip strength and improve your posture. As we hold the weights in our hand, we wanna have really good upright posture. We wanna contract our core um, while we're doing this movement pattern, and that'll help to activate those core muscles and activate those spinal stabilizers. This is a great exercise if you deal with low back pain. This will help to take pressure off your low back and help stabilize your core. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple weights and we're going to hold them by our side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk forward and back, maintaining good posture. You can see my ears in line with my shoulders and my hips. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna contract our core and then we're just gonna simply walk forward nice and slow. And what we'll do is we'll start off just working 10 to 15 feet back and forth. And then you can work up to 30 to 50 feet. Again, nice and tall posture, but do it nice and slow. So the carry exercise is the final movement pattern I recommend. Now, if you have any questions about these movement patterns, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you have any other questions, reach out to me at 703-912-7822 and you can schedule an appointment online at novacarewellness.com.